For the American privateer named after him, see Prince de Neufchâtel, Louis Alexander Berthier, the 20th of November 1753 to the 1st of June 1815, first Prince of Wagram, Sovereign Prince of Neuchâtel, was a French Marshal and Vice Constable of the Empire and Chief of Staff under Napoleon. Topic: Early Life. He was born on 20 November 1753 at Versailles to Lieutenant Colonel Jean-Baptiste Berthier an officer in the Corps of Topographical Engineers, and his first wife married in 1746 Marie-Francoise Lullier de la Serre. He was the eldest of five children, with the three brothers also serving in the French army, two becoming generals during the Napoleonic Wars. Military career As a boy, he was instructed in the military art by his father, an officer of the Corps de Genie Engineer Corps. At the age of 17, he entered the army, serving successively in the staff, the engineers and the Prince of Lambescu's dragoons. In 1780, he went to North America with Rochambeau, and on his return, having attained the rank of colonel, he was employed in various staff posts and in a military mission to Prussia. During the Revolution, as chief of staff of the Versailles National Guard, he protected the aunts of Louis XVI from popular violence, and aided their escape 1791. .In the War of 1792, he was at once made chief of staff to Marshal Luckner, and he bore a distinguished part in the Argonne campaign of Dumouriez and Kellerman. He served with great credit in the Vendéan War of 1793–1795, and was in the next year made a General of Division and Chief of Staff Major General to the Army of Italy, which Bonaparte had recently been appointed to command. He played an important role in the Battle of Rivoli, relieving Barthélemy Joubert when the latter was attacked by the Austrian General Joseph Alvinci. His power of work, accuracy and quick comprehension, combined with his long and varied experience and his complete mastery of detail, made him the ideal chief of staff to a great soldier. In this capacity, he was Napoleon's most valued assistant for the rest of his career. He accompanied Napoleon throughout the brilliant campaign of 1796, and was left in charge of the army after the Treaty of Campo Formio. He was in this post in 1798 when he entered Italy, invaded the Vatican, organized the Roman Republic, and took the Pope Pius VI as prisoner back to Valence France, where, after a tortuous journey under Berthier's supervision, the Pope died, dealing a major blow to the Vatican's political power which, however, did not prove as ephemeral as that of the First Empire. After this, he joined his chief in Egypt, serving there until Napoleon's return. He assisted in the coup d'état of 18 Brumaire the 9th of November 1799, afterwards becoming Minister of War for a time. In the campaign of Marengo, he was the nominal head of the Army of Reserve, but the First Consul accompanied the army and Berthier acted in reality, as always, as Chief of Staff to Napoleon, lest one think this was a relatively safe job. A contemporary subordinate staff officer, Brassier, reports that at the Battle of Marengo, the general-in-chief Berthier gave his orders with the precision of a consummate warrior, and at Marengo maintained the reputation that he so rightly acquired in Italy and in Egypt under the orders of Bonaparte. He himself was hit by a bullet in the arm. Two of his aides-de-camp, Dutales and Laborde, had their horses killed. At the close of the campaign, he was employed in civil and diplomatic business. This included a mission to Spain in August 1800, which resulted in the retrocession of Louisiana to France by the Treaty of San Ildefonso, 1 October 1800, and led to the Louisiana Purchase, when Napoleon deposed King Frederick William III of Prussia from the Principality of Nucatel, Berthier was appointed its ruler. This lasted until 1814 and also brought him the title of Sovereign Prince in 1806. When Napoleon became emperor, Berthier was at once made a marshal of the empire. He took part in the campaigns of Austerlitz, Jena and Friedland. He was created Duke or Prince of Valangen in 1806, Sovereign Prince of Neuchâtel in the same year, and Vice Constable of the Empire in 1807. In 1808, he served in the Peninsular War, and in 1809, he served in the Austrian theatre during the War of the Fifth Coalition, after which he was given the title of Prince of Wagram. 
He was with Napoleon in Russia in 1812, Germany in 1813, and France in 1814, fulfilling, until the fall of the French Empire, the functions of Major General of the Grande Armée. Following Napoleon's first abdication, Berthier retired to his 600-acre estate, and resumed his hobbies of falconry and sculpture. He made peace with Louis XVIII in 1814, and accompanied the king on his solemn entry into Paris. During Napoleon's short exile on Elba, he informed Berthier of his projects. Berthier was much perplexed as to his future course and, being unwilling to commit to Napoleon, fell under the suspicion both of his old leader and of Louis XVIII. On Napoleon's return to France, Berthier withdrew to Bamberg, where he died a few weeks later on 1 June 1815 in a fall from an upstairs window. The manner of his death is uncertain. According to some accounts, he was assassinated by members of a secret society, while others say that, maddened by the sight of Russian troops marching to invade France, he threw himself from his window and was killed. The loss of Berthier's skills at Waterloo was keenly felt by Napoleon, as he later stated succinctly, If Berthier had been there, I would not have met this misfortune. <laughs> Character assessment Berthier was an immensely skilled chief of staff, but he was not a great field commander. When he was in temporary command in 1809, the French army in Bavaria underwent a series of reverses. His merit as a general was completely overshadowed by the genius of his emperor, he is nevertheless renowned for his excellent organizing skills and being able to understand and carry out the emperor's directions to the minutest detail. General Paul Thibault said of him in 1796, no one could have better suited General Bonaparte, who wanted a man capable of relieving him of all detailed work, to understand him instantly and to foresee what he would need. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage and family In 1796, he fell in love with the Marquise Visconti, who was to be his mistress for the duration of the empire, despite the emperor's disapproval. And even if Napoleon forced him to marry a Bavarian princess in 1808, Berthier made it so that his mistress and wife could get on and live under the same roof. To the Emperor's fury, on 9 March 1808, Berthier married Duchess Maria Elizabeth in Bavaria, the 5 May 1784, Paris, 1 June 1849, only daughter of Duke Wilhelm in Bavaria and Countess Palatine Maria Anna of Zybrücken Birkenfeld Rapolstein, the sister of King Maximilian I Joseph of Bavaria. They had one son and two daughters. Napoleon Alexander, second duke, the 11th of September 1810 to the 10th of February 1887, married on the 29th of June 1831 to Cianade Françoise Clary, the 25th of November 1812 to the 27th of April 1884, and had issue extinct in male line in 1918. Caroline Josephine, the 22nd of August 1812 to 1905, married on the 9th of October 1832 to Alphonse Napoleon, Baron de Houtpool, the 29th of May 1806 to the 25th of April 1889. Marie Anne, the 19th of February 1816 to the 23rd of July 1878, married on the 24th of June 1834 to Jules Lebrun, third Duke of Plaisance, the 19th of April 1811 to the 15th of January 1872. Topic in literature. Berthier is mentioned and or appears in several of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Brigadier Gerard stories, including How the Brigadier Was Tempted by the Devil 1895. <laughs> Notes <laughs>